So you must have heard that Christy is officially endorsing yep. Romney today. What do you think that means for Romney? I don't care what it means for Romney. It's good for Bloomberg News because we need news to keep things going. And we really live for those special moments, things that come out of the blue. I'm hearing the protesters over here. It's a rowdy campus. But I think it's a big deal. It's, it's a big deal. It's a nice surprise for the governor. He's ahead, but he's got a jump start above that 22% national number. These are the kind of little things that become a bigger victory. So tonight after the debate, are you tonight during the debate, are you looking for any candidates to really pop out? Well, there's no question the focus is on Mr. Kane. Uh, he will be appearing with us after the debate. We're really looking forward to that. And I spoke to him briefly last night. Uh, he's got the momentum right now, but there's some real questions about his organization. So I think the first view is on Herman Kane, and then the next view is on Governor Perry. We're going to be covering the economy. I can't get anybody to tell me what Perry economics is. Maybe we'll find out what it is uh, uh, somewhere through tonight's debate. Right, so with regards to Kane, do you think this upswing is a permanent upswing or do you think that... Oh, I, we don't, going? we don't, you're going to get me in the timeout chair at Bloomberg. We don't predict what people are going to do. We just observe what they're doing. What we see right now is he's had a better than good couple weeks. He's taken advantage of the stumbles of the governor from Texas. And I would suggest that Mr. Kane, uh, everything's said and done. Um, he's got a lot to prove, but he's really made a splash. He's just got to keep it going. So as far as the debate tonight, obviously the economy is an incredibly important view. Um, other issues that you're looking at, other hot topics? Well, there's a lot of other hot topics. We've chosen to focus on the debate, you know, the phrase I use, economics, finance, and investment. But what that really means, particularly for a national audience, not a Wall Street audience, is the idea of jobs. A little bit the deficit, but I'll tell you, Jess, that's faded in the last week or so. It's about the labor economy. It's about the frustration over wage growth. It's about income distribution and separately wealth distribution. And it does dovetail into the protests. I mean, is it going to be Occupy Hanover tonight? I was going to ask you that. So what do you think about <laughs> Occupy Wall Street? Do you think that'll be an issue? You know, I, I said it was a non-event three or four weeks ago, right after 9-11. It was very moving to be at ground zero for the 10th anniversary. And then here's this Occupy Wall Street percolating up. And it was a non-deal, but I said to somebody, you know, it's a beautiful fall and these things can just get going. One little thing here, one little thing there. I guess it was tough last night in Boston. So uh, we are paying attention to it. Yes, and actually there's an Occupy Dartmouth movement going on tonight, right now. So maybe you'll see a little bit more of that here. Hope I can get to the airport. That's, that's, <laughs> you know, just, just, just too much. Wait a minute, how can you have Occupy Dartmouth at 53,000 <laughs> bucks a year? An elite school, okay, maybe I'm seeing some signs over here. Climate action. Cl better food in the cafeteria, okay. <laughs> Thanks for speaking with us, Mr. Keen. This is great. Um, here at Dartmouth, talking to Tom Keen from Bloomberg.